Okay, so first question I had for you guys, just a simple one. What drew you into the show? Whenever it was pitched to you guys, what made you say, yes, I'm all in, sign me up? Yeah. Uh, well, the script is incredible. Um, it's uh, like an existential comedy, and I read it, and I immediately was like, oh, okay, so this is like if <laughs> Silicon Valley and Black Mirror yeah. had a little baby. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was like, I was in yes. immediately. It's uh, super funny and uh, it, it yeah, very existential. Yeah, it feels like it's got... Um, the timing feels perfect for, I think, the tone and the taste of what people want. You want to ask these bigger questions. You want to feel like, okay, what is our reality? Where are we now? Where are we going to be? And I feel like that's what's exciting about the script and the discussions that the characters are having within the entire storyline. So. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw that Jim was uh, directing it, I was really excited. Um, I saw his film Coherence and uh, thoroughly loved that film and had to literally go to YouTube and like ask questions about it like what does this mean what does that mean and those different timelines I don't know if you saw it but um, I was really excited to work with him and also excited to work with someone who puts his actors first um, he really puts an emphasis on creating a very safe environment for the actors to shine it was a very small um, crew like no hair and makeup very little lighting um, felt very intimate um, and just like the perfect environment for us to really uh, show up and give of ourselves and not in a way that, you know, other productions have been a part of, they sort of rush you and, the, you know, the clock is ticking. And with Jim, um, he's all about bringing the best performance out of you. And um, so I was really excited to just be part of something that's so creative. Well, so the funny story is Jim and I have known each other for 23, three years now and when I was a kid he gave me my first acting job <laughs> so um, Jim directed a Sega Dreamcast commercial when I was a kid and I like it was in a sound stage I got to fly all over the room and that made me fall in love with acting and then 22 years later last year he reached out to me and was like I'd like for you to be in Shatterbelt and I was like absolutely because I get to work with the director that started my yeah, acting exactly. journey so that's how I got on board and I'm I'm there for anything Jim ever wants to do. <laughs> this project came to me in an audition and I thought the script was so um, let's say eccentric that I was like I don't know what this is gonna become but I'm fascinated and I want to learn more and I thought that our writing really approached a sort of consciousness about reality that was truly intriguing and I wanted to know what is this character thinking? What is she experiencing a revelation about? And how can I really delve into that intellectually and emotionally to tell that story? Because I feel like every day we go through these moments of really having our minds blown in a certain sense. And this, this show really gets to expand on that essence and that feeling of anxiety and revelation and earth-shattering realizations about how everything happens around us. The whole... Uh like idea of the episode I'm in is that my character Exibite is from another dimension and I felt like sometimes in my real life I feel that way so I felt like I was able to bring some of myself into the character like I always feel like if I can bring a part of myself into the character it, then then it, you know it makes it easier for me play. The through line for all of them is just like different state of consciousness kind of like uh, I don't know almost like a quantum physics possibility you know like uh, almost as if multiverses kind of mesh together and there's an overlap so yeah I think it's kind of it explores that other space yeah you know when I first read this it was very unassuming to me because I didn't really I didn't really have any scope of like who the people were that were attached to it, but when I read the script, something really stood out to me because it captured a very independent spirit, and it also kind of, it compelled me in a way because it was like dealing with questions of reality in a way that you see in like a black mirror or other types of like non-traditional sci-fi, and that was what I thought made it, the project had a lot of potential. Well, I'd seen Coherence before, and Jim's first movie, and it blew me away 
Um, so when I first read the role, I, I'll be honest, like there were parts where I was like, you know, um, his, his picture is clearly bigger than mine, but it was a leap of faith. And uh, every second I was on set was just more and more proof of like, no, this was the right choice. This is going to be awesome. Well, I was really lucky that it got offered to me from uh, James watching my reel years ago. So they just brought me the whole thing all in one package. They were like, here's the role, here's the show, do you want to do it? And I knew that James was amazing, and I knew Pat Oswalt was in it, and I was uh, it was the end of quarantine, and I was ready to get out of the house. And I was so excited to do anything, let alone something as amazing as Shatterbell. With such an unorthodox show, with such abstract and strange concepts, what made you, as an actor, force yourself to think differently or think outside of the box to get into the role of the character that you were presented? I think we had a really beautiful opportunity with Jim's script which was he writes in a very intellectual manner and so when if you're a heady actor I think this was a phenomenal project to get involved with because you can really approach it from thought process and dive into the intellectualism and the and the moments to moment thinking that your character is going to be going through, that's that's one of my favorite ways to work. And so this script really highlighted that and allowed me to sort of delve in from that heady place of thinking, wow, what is going on? What's happening? How is how is everything around me working? And how did I not realize this before? How am I just finding this out now? So I think exploring that mental space was just a gift and a joy. I would say Jim is a phenomenal director that thinks outside the box, so I kind of have to do the same. Um, he directed at least our episode, which was Emotus, the one with the apple. He directed it almost like a play, and it was such a cool experience because at one point we forgot where the cameras were, and there were three around the room. The entire set was a hot set, and we were just living and just being in the circumstances and it didn't even feel like a shoot anymore so it was a very cool experience. He wants a very naturalistic performance right so he would rather you say the wrong lines or make up your own lines than worry about the dialogue that's written um, because he uh, if he ever like sensed a little bit of acting or performance coming mm -hmm. out he'd be like okay it's time to take it back. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Stop yeah. doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Lose all of your training. Just be a person. <laughs> Just exist. Yep. I promise I will catch you <laughs> existing on camera. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the acting is actually incredible in all these episodes because it, like, lends itself to a very naturalistic performance. So that was, um, yeah. Did I answer your question? I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah, and I will say, somewhere, yeah. yeah, for Twilight's character, which, not to give away too much, but she's got, like, this wild arc that she goes on, and I think uh, it was towards the end of the first shoot day that Jim was like, you know what, let's go back and really root her in reality for that first scene so that we can give it that turn and have her still mm -hmm. feel like a person who's just not having the best day. Yeah, everyone's having a pretty tough day yeah. in yeah. this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad day, but also an awesome day. <laughs> Living in a world that's not really bound by the same rules of normal society, like in, in our episode, I don't want to spoil it all the way, but like we were dealing with something that was bending what like the real world rules of physics were were actually how they're supposed to work. So being in an environment like that, it's, it makes you kind of step out from what you know, how you behave in normal everyday life, and now you're like, okay, well, I help run this organization. We see this kind of life-altering thing happening, and how am I going to kind of help lead my team to to kind of approach this problem that we've experienced for the first time? So, uh, and then to do that with everybody, uh, it, it's a true ensemble piece. So um, that was that was also really great. Well, the character I play uh, gets to be kind of cheeky. Um, so uh, for me, it was actually. Most of the focus was around props. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but there was a lot of uh, props that I had to handle and um, uh, as far as the, the Pearls episode with the different courses and the meals and, and everything. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil, but uh, I would just say um, the character that I play, it's all about not judging a book by its cover. Well, my character is very mysterious, and she's kind of behind the scenes, and you don't really realize, which is kind of like the ongoing question of the episode. Uh, so I think that uh, I can bring that part of myself into the character. Honestly, it was a really great opportunity because it let me get to explore two things, and most most jobs you book are not that way. So honestly, like it was. 
there was no con. There was nothing like particularly difficult. If anything, it made it easier because all, all I could figure, you know, think about was how do I make them different? I didn't have to think as much about, you know, what is this particular thing. It's all right. I can't make it the same as that. So my choices have to be different. Yeah, well, it's the tone of the show is really interesting. It's comedy, but it's got to be really toned down sci-fi comedy. When I try to explain the genre to people, they're like, I, that's so different. So just like tweaking my performance to be not sitcom funny, but goofy in a subtle way, um, James really helped me with that. That was a stretch. What are you hoping for viewers of the show to take away, whether it be the concepts presented or your own character specifically? Just what are you hoping that fans are going to be able to go in, watch, and take away from your episode? You got some great questions, man. Um, <laughs> what's the one thing that I want people to take away? Um, the, the power and the joy of community, ensemble, um, and how when you try to approach a problem together, you always... Even if you don't necessarily solve the problem, you're always better off when you do things as a group. If anything, this project shows you that if you've got a good script and you have like some drive, the excuses to not just go make it are very few. Like, get out there, make it, it'll happen. You know, things like this are made out of the love of people's hearts. You know, almost no budgets. You can do it. From this episode that I'm in, Emotus, I think that it's kind of uh, metaphorical. There's a lot of metaphors in it, and I think that it's kind of poetic in a sense. Uh, so I think that it's one of those things that is kind of ambiguous, and it, each person might have their own uh, perception of what it means to them. As um, I'm, I'm a mixed background um, person, I'm. I'm half Japanese and I'm half Australian but I was actually born and raised in Israel and then I've been living in the States and a lot of times people peg me as an Asian American or fully Asian and um, they want to sort of label me, put me in, in a certain box and, and I think what's fun about this episode for me personally is getting to represent a character that you can't really put in a box. What I think is fascinating about this episode uh, in Modus is the mob mindset that you'll see happen where one person has an idea and as long as they're confident, uh, they can rally a ton of other people behind an idea, whether it's true or not. And I think that's fascinating. I see Carrie Ann as sort of a straight man in this episode and she's going into this um, experience thinking that great things are going to happen and she's expectant and she's joyous about that and she's a little nervous but mostly excited and the reality of what occurs is so opposite of what she expected that I think all of us can relate to that whether it's a business meeting or a personal relationship that we're just like expecting something and it totally doesn't happen and so that journey I think is super relatable and I just I just loved playing her I think she was really kind of grounded and you get to live through her vicariously to experience this moment of crisis in her personal life and in her career it is a bonkers episode and it really there's some existential stuff some philosophical stuff and I think Jim did a really great job of making an episode that really makes us all kind of tune within and think about what what is reality so I hope anybody that watches this can really sit down and ask themselves what what our reality is and what the construct is and whether it's our own making of the reality or what society thinks it is so I'll leave you with that <laughs> I think it's uh, one of those projects where everybody can take a little something different from each episode and if they were to watch it multiple times, they would pull out also different, you know, things. Um, but all of the episodes definitely make you think. Like, these are stories that after you watch it, you're probably going to walk out and talk about it and be like, yeah, but what about everybody's going to have a theory about certain aspects and, like, plot points, I think. Well, um, it's, I mean, 
I, God, I don't even know how to answer that question. <laughs> I, it's, it's we like, hope you so, enjoy it. Yeah, first of and all. And have fun. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's such an existential, it gives you a little bit of an existential crisis. It makes you think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's a lot to interpret and digest and, um, and it, it just raises a lot of questions about reality yeah. and what's real. And, um, and uh, I yeah, think so. in general, it's like, what, what does anyone want to do when they create something? Hopefully create a discussion around it that when you leave the theater, when you leave the experience, you're still having that sense of community around the project. So, you know, what does it mean about your relationships? What does it mean about your existence? So yeah. I just hope people are... You know, I thinking about those things. I hope everyone has a little bit of an existential crisis. Yeah. In a little the best way minor possible. freak out. <laughs> Just enough of a freak out. Just a little bit of an With your feet on the crown. Crisis. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a cute one. That would be cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hook em horns. <laughs> Hook em horns, baby. Hook em. Hook em horns. <laughs> yeah, what you say? Hook em horns. Hook em horns. All right. God, say it like you mean it. God. Hook em horns. Hook em horns. Hook em horns. Oh, my God. That's a mess. Hook 'em horns! There we go. We got it.